Hello, welcome to Replicate This AE Edition. This is problem number six, which is called Concentric Circles. Let's get right into it. We have created a new blank comp here uh, with the name six, Concentric Circles. The only thing we need to do at this point is ensure that we've got, well, I'm going to do 1280 by 720. I'd probably recommend that you do it as well, just because of the, the source files we're going to import. Frame rate 30. Duration at least 10 seconds. Let's make it something a little bit more even. Let's just go with 10. And the background color needs to be a pea green color. I found that 808,000 works really well, but you can pretty much put your own pea green or green color in. All right, we're ready to go. We got a blank composition. We need to import one Illustrator file. The Illustrator file that we're going to import is available on Learning Suite and it's called 6concentriccircles.ai. It is a rarity to import something as footage, but uh, this is one of those times. So let's just leave it as footage and let's click Open. Uh, we're going to drag it into our new comp and there it is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, it's actually seven, six concentric black circles and this outer pink one, which we will deal with in a moment. All right, let's, so with the Illustrator file that we just imported, selected, let's go to Layer, Create Shapes from Vector Layer. What that does is it hides, or it turns off the visibility of our Illustrator layer and it makes a shape layer that uses all of the lines from Illustrator. Let's flip this down and see what actually happened here. Flip down the twirly, flip down contents. We can see that each path has been put into, each Illustrator path has been put into a shape layer group. There are seven of them. And the first thing we need to do, I happen to know that the operation we want to perform on these paths only works when all paths are in one single group. So the first thing we need to do is drag all path one items in every group into the top group one, like this, path one, path one. And once you're done, once you pull the paths out of the groups, you can delete them. So path two and three are dead to me. I'm pulling path one out of group four, path one out of group five. I'm going to delete group four and five because they no longer have paths, group six. And you'll notice how I'm dragging the paths just under the last one, and they are automatically renaming themselves numerically. Group 6 and 7 no longer have paths. They are useless to me. I'm deleting them. And stroke 1 should be on the bottom of all of your paths, just for this to work correctly. Let's flip down stroke 1 and see some of the options we have here. We have, uh, right now the color is black. We want to change that to white. So our strokes are now white, and we want our width to be somewhere around 44 points in order to get... We're just, right now, we're concerned with these central circles. We're not really concerned with this keyhole-shaped thing. All right, 44 is good, because I think 43 is just slightly too small. Yeah, you can sort of see 43 and a half, maybe? 43.5, that works. Okay. What we need to do with these wide strokes, see how it looks like one solid shape? That's exactly what we want. We need to, with all of our seven paths, oh, by the way, let's see, we don't need this outer one to be visible right now, and if we go through and click, looks like it's path number six. Let's turn off the eyeball on path number six. There we go. Now we just have this one circular shape. One thing that shape layers and text layers have in common is that when you flip down there, twirly, you will see a little drop down. On text layers, this says animate, but on shape layers, this says add. We're going to add what's called, under the drop down, we're going to add what's called a trim paths operation. Now, you'll see what trim paths does in a second. Let's flip down the trim paths twirly. Look, it's got a start and an end. Whoa. Start and end. Basically, it grows the 44 point white stroke, 43 and a half, point white stroke along our paths as we scrub these values, start and end. See that? All right, we're going to use that to our advantage. Again, another thing in common with text layers is that you have, this isn't called a range selector, but that's essentially what it is. 
So what we're going to do, I happen to know that we're going to use the offset property to get this thing to work. So at zero seconds on my timeline, I'm going to keyframe offset at zero rotations. And I know that our animation is going to be six seconds long, so I'm going to jump to six seconds, command left arrow to get to exactly six seconds. And I'm going to type in one full rotation on offset. Okay, the next important step, because this isn't going to do much, nothing's happening in fact, I'm going to, under Trim Multiple Shapes, change it from simultaneously to individually. And what that's going to do for us, uh, why isn't it doing anything? Oh, sorry, we forgot one thing. It actually is doing something, but we need to shrink the start and the end range. If this were a text layer, I would say we need to shrink the magnifying glass or the range selector. So under Start, I'm going to go about one third up. I'm going to type in 30%. There we go. Now it's starting to do something. And end to 70%. There we go. Now, when the offset shifts through all the strokes, it starts to basically just radially uh, stroke all of our circles. So that's way cooler than what it was doing before, which was this, but we just couldn't see. Let me show you what was happening before. See, as I go closer to zero, all of our strokes sort of fill in, and as I go closer to 100%, yeah. In other words, all of our circles were completely filled, and even though they were rotating, we couldn't see any difference. But now, since the stroke is short and only covers about 40% of our line, we can see the strokes dancing around on our circles as we animate from zero rotations to one full rotation from zero to six seconds. Hopefully, if that doesn't make sense, stop, rewind, watch it a few more times, test it out yourself until you feel comfortable with it. Okay, this is pretty much all we're gonna do with this stroke. And since it's so cool, I'm gonna close, I'm gonna collapse everything except for my offset keyframes by hitting U on this first layer right here. I'm gonna call this layer white. Hit return to edit, hit return again to seal, and then I'm going to hit command D to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to call this layer turquoise. You are free to use whatever color scheme you would like on this tutorial. I'm going to use this greenish, turquoise-ish, whitish color scheme. All right, I'm going to flip down the turquoise layer twirly, and I'm going to flip down Group one, I'm going to flip down the stroke one, and I'm going to change the color from white to guess what? Turquoise. I happen to know that RGB turquoise is somewhere around, yeah, 255, 255 is bright turquoise. Okay, that's a little bit too bright for me, so I'm going to close that up, and our, on our basic layer transformation, I'm going to change the opacity of the entire layer to 45%. And what is that going to do for us? Well, nothing right now. It's just going to give us this light turquoise feel. But let's reveal the trim paths. And you know what? This will help if you can see it in context. So since this is a duplicate of our white layer, the offset keyframes go from 0 to 1x. What I actually want is the exact opposite of that. So I'm going to hop to the second keyframe here. And I'm going to change it from one full rotation to negative 1. So these strokes are going to travel in the exact opposite direction, and since they're translucent, they're going to overlap with the white. Here, let's set our work area to our current time. N, and then spacebar to preview. Now we've actually got three different colors here, because we have turquoise over white, we have white, and then we have turquoise over pea green, which gives us three nice colors here overlapping and looking very techno and very R2-D2, putting the key into the Death Star to stop the trash compactor from crushing all of our favorite Star Wars actors. Pretty nice, pretty cool. Trim paths is a very powerful part of shape layers and it will help you. I'm gonna hit Command A, I'm gonna hit U. I like to have not tall layers, very short minimal layers when I'm working on one screen and doing tutorials. So memorize U, it only shows you the keyframed properties on your layers. All right, we are actually going to use, we could choose either one of these turquoise or white layers. I'm going to use, let's close up trim paths. I'm gonna use the turquoise layer just because it's on top. I'm gonna to turn back on my path six. Now, where is path six, you might ask? There it is. 
There it is. Okay, so it turns out that we actually need, well, you know what, we don't. We don't need to do that. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. With that turned back on, this will give us a visual reference upon which we can put our type. If you look at the reference movie, I probably should have shown that at first. If you look at the reference movie, you see type scrolling on screen and following the contours of this keyhole shape. What should we call this? Keyhole? A old style tennis racket? Not sure. Those things that people out on runways at airports hold? I'm going to just call it the key. And I'm going to type a brand new text layer and I'm going to use the words, the lyrics from the seminal 80s new wave hit, You Spin Me Round because this is a very round and circular exercise to write the words you spin me right round baby right round like a record baby round 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 I'm gonna hit caps lock like a record baby right round 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 <laughs> Hopefully there aren't any typos in there. I'm going to hit enter to seal that. I'm going to grab my black arrow. Let's see what we got. Let's see if I had any spelling errors. Oops. Okay. If you ever get this little red alert bar with this little yellow triangle exclamation point, that's because caps lock is on and the comp window does not ever refresh if that is on. So I'm going to undo it. Now it can refresh. You spin me right around, right, right around like a record. Okay. That looks good. Now, how are we going to get this text to hug the contours of this key shape? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We are going to, let's see, was that path six? Yes, that outer keyhole shape. Key shape is path six. I'm going to flip down path six, and I'm going to actually select the word path. You can't get it by selecting path six. It has to be actually path. Command C to copy, or edit copy. I'm going to close that up and I want to paste that shape that I just copied from turquoise. I want to paste as a mask on my text layer. Now, I already know because I've done this before that if I try to paste right now, nothing will happen. I actually need a mask upon which I will paste the path that's on the clipboard right now. So text layer selected, go to layer, mask, new mask, and I see how I get this rectangular mask that hugs the contours of my type. I'm going to flip down masks. I'm going to flip down mask one. I'm going to select the word, the words mask path. And now if I paste, edit, paste, look what happened. There is a path that matches path six from our turquoise layer. I'm going to use this path six as a reference. Uh, so I can position my mask exactly where it needs to be. See how it's right in the center, well, approximately in the center of this outer keyhole shape. Click return. Okay, so now our mask is the right shape. By the way, I'm going to go back down here to turquoise, go to path six, and I'm going to hide it because I no longer need it to appear. Close up turquoise, and then here's where the magic happens, people. On my you spin me right round text layer, I'm going to flip down text. I'm going to flip down path options. And guess what happens if I click the path drop down and select mask one to our type? Guess what happens? There you go. It hugs the contours of this path. Now that's cool and that's useful. However, what we want is actually to animate it from off screen at the right on the top to go around like this and then go off screen on the right on the bottom. Guess what? First margin is the property that's going to do that for us. I'm going to go to zero seconds on my timeline. Watch what happens when I scrub first margin. It actually moves along the path. That is exactly what we want, right? I'm going to try to get it all the way off screen. I'm going to hold down shift as I scrub the first margin values because when you hold down shift, it multiplies everything by 10, which is going to give us much more leverage with one drag. There we go. Okay, so it's off screen, it's at 2159. I'm gonna keyframe it. As long as it's off screen, that's what's important. It doesn't matter the, the specific number here. All right, now how long was our 
animation down here was six seconds, right? I'm going to use the white keyframes as a reference with these little buttons, the left and right keyframe buttons, the navigational buttons, and I'm going to drag my first margin value back up here on my text layer, drag it to the left while holding down shift, and watch my text come all the way around until it goes just off screen like that. Okay, so two keyframes on first margin basically give us text that comes in from the left, spins around our circle, gets back on track, and goes off screen, which is exactly what we want to do. Let's preview that. Okay, it looks like we're done, people. Now we could do things like, this doesn't actually need any easy ease, and it might, I usually don't like to put text on uh, motion blur on scrolling text like this because it actually makes it a little bit harder to read. So you know what, I'm gonna leave things the way they are and call this finished. This is our final product. Uh, <laughs> This is our final product. Congratulations for making it all the way to the end with me. Thanks, and we'll see you on problem number seven. Bye-bye.